the nervous system. It's the control center of the body. But how does it really work? Well, you and I, we do a lot of things. We talk, we walk, we eat, we sleep, we play, we laugh, we might even cry sometimes. For any of these things to happen, there needs to be a control center. And the nervous system is that control center inside the body. In fact, it's my favorite system. That's why I did a master's degree in neurobiology. It's just so awesome. I love it. Okay, so the nervous system is made up of a network of very specialized cells. These cells are called neurons, and they are unique in that they can send signals throughout the body very quickly. If you got a message that needs to get delivered from your brain all the way down to your pinky toe, that signal travels so quickly that it seems instantaneous. How fast exactly? Well, some neurons can send signals or nerve impulses at speeds of up to 120 meters per second. That's 275 miles per hour or 432 kilometers per hour. And you thought that Tesla was fast? It ain't got nothing on them neurons inside your body. Now, now, we can divide the nervous system into two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, this is where the bulk of the processing and integration happens. It's made up of the brain, ah, oh, the brain is so awesome, and the spinal cord. The second part of the nervous system is the peripheral nervous system, which is made up of a ton of nerves, and they send signals between the rest of the body and the central nervous system. Okay, so let's give this some context. You touch a hot stove. That's no fun. In fact, it sucks. Don't do it. Trust me. You have sensory receptors in your skin, and these sensory receptors detect the heat, and sensory neurons that are are part of the peripheral nervous system, they send signals to the central nervous system. Those signals go to the spinal cord and ultimately to a specific part of the brain. The brain then processes that sensory information and quickly determines that this is a harmful stimulus. That junk is hot. So the brain in turn sends signals via the spinal cord out of the central nervous system via motor nerves that are a part of the peripheral nervous system and out to the muscles of the arm with signals for those muscles to contract in specific ways so that you can pull away from that harmful stimulus. Now, keep this in mind. I am tremendously oversimplifying everything that's happening just for that simple reflex to occur. I haven't spoken about the ions that have to flow into the membranes of the axons of the neurons. I didn't say anything about all of the complex processes that lead to the release of neurotransmitters. There's a lot of stuff happening here but it happens so quickly that you don't even really have to think about it before your hand pulls away. Isn't that ridiculously awesome? I know. Okay, so what we've discussed so far is a relatively simple reflex. Sensory stimulus via the peripheral nervous system, quick processing in the central nervous system, and then motor output via the peripheral nervous system. But the peripheral nervous system, that can be subdivided even further. The peripheral nervous system consists of two parts, the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system can be seen as the part of the peripheral nervous system that deals with voluntary processes. You want to move, you decide to move, and signals get sent via the somatic part of the peripheral nervous system to the relevant muscles and you move. Like, this is me moving. I don't know why I'm moving this way. Wait, yes, I do. I'm doing it because I wanna. And I can, because it's voluntary. The somatic nervous system also relays sensory information from the eyes, the skin, the ears, all of that stuff to the central nervous system. Now, the autonomic nervous system is involved in regulating involuntary bodily functions and glands. So when you think about things like heart rate, breathing, respiratory rate, digestion, and so on, these aren't things that you need to think about in order for them to happen. It's regulated via the autonomic nervous system. And even the autonomic nervous system can be divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. The sympathetic, that's the fight or flight. That's things that are speeding up, like you're running, you're exercising, your heart rate and your breathing rate, that speeds up. That's sympathetic. And when you're chilling out, you're slowing down, things are getting calm. 
That's more of the rest and digest. That is the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. With all that said, understanding how that relatively simple reflex of you pulling your hand away from the hot stove works, it gives you a simple way to understand how even the autonomic nervous system functions. It happens kind of automatically. Wait, no autonomically. Let's say you're exercising, you're out for a run, your muscles, they're using oxygen. And because of that, the oxygen levels in your blood, they're going to start decreasing. I mean, if you're using up the oxygen that's there, there'll be less oxygen available. Now, your muscles, they need oxygen in order for them to do what they do. So something has to happen. Well, there are sensory receptors in the body that's going to detect that drop in blood oxygen levels. And just like we saw before, they're going to send signals via sensory neurons that are a part of the autonomic nervous system back to the central nervous system, spinal cord, and ultimately the brain. The brain is going to process that information and send signals back via the peripheral nervous system to the heart and lungs to cause the heart rate and the respiratory rate to increase. So now you're breathing faster, which brings more oxygen, and your heart is beating faster, which allows the blood to travel faster to deliver more oxygen to the parts of your body that need it. It's a beautiful thing and a beautiful system. Now, these are very simplistic examples of what happens in your nervous system, but it gives you a good idea of how all of it works. We're sending signals to and from the central nervous system. We're controlling functions of the body. But there are also higher levels of processing that happen for more complex activities. Think about things like speech, thought, emotion, memory. All of these are handled by the nervous system. When you look at the brain, you will see that there are specific parts of the brain that have specific functions. The outer surface of the brain is called the cerebrum or the cerebral cortex. It's divided into different parts. You have the frontal lobe that's involved in higher level processing, things like thought and reasoning, planning things out, speech, movement, emotions, problem solving. There are some complex things happening in that region. We have the parietal lobes, and those are involved in movement, orientation, recognition, and perception. The temporal lobe that's involved in auditory perception, which makes sense because your ears are like right there. And the occipital lobe that's involved in visual processing. And just like when you touch a hot stove and signals come from those sensory receptors in your hand and they get sent to the brain for further processing, we have similar processes that are happening to bring info from other parts to specific areas in the brain. For example, we said that the occipital lobe is involved in visual processing. Well, how does vision happen? You have your eyes. How do we see? Well, you see because light bounces off whatever object you're looking at. It goes into your eyes and hits the retina. You have sensory receptors in the retina that generate signals. Those signals travel through your optic nerve and ultimately end up in the visual cortex that's right there in your occipital lobe at the back of your head. That signal then gets processed and you see something. But the processing that results in vision happens in the brain. And the different parts of the brain communicate with each other. The brain communicates with the spinal cord. The spinal cord communicates with the brain. The brain and the spinal cord communicate with the rest of the body. The organs communicate with the central nervous system. The central nervous system communicates with the peripheral nervous system. Everything's connected, everything is communicating, and the nervous system plays a crucial role of you being able to be. And if you think that's awesome, you're gonna wanna watch this next video to find out more about this amazing nervous system of yours.